We were ready to go to Rats on Blue, then it was changed to Serena. Uh, be that as it may, we have a country to think about, to love, to up uphold the principles that hold us together, basically the rule of law. And we have a region that is in dire need of mediation. And even before you go to the, to the region, the country itself, um, I happened to be a certified mediator myself, and I went through a mediation course. Uh, and and uh, I'm sure that may not have been captured. But people remember that when we were given some jobs to do by two presidents, President uh, Daniel Apmoy at that time as a young foreign minister, and if you allow me to mention Evelyn, you just mentioned to me that your grandmother is a famous Elizabeth Bagaya, who served as foreign minister in Uganda. Uh, and now she's doing regional work, literally. Can somebody hold this for me? Uh, now that I've taken position. Um, so you see you have uh, that DNA of working for regional well-being, the integration of East Africans. Uh, I gather from Evelyn that the next stop will be Dar es Salaam in February. And I will want to bring on board people like my friend Jakaya Kikwete and others. And I remember that Kenyans and East Africans will have forgotten that I was actually given the responsibility by Bayao, believe it or not, by three presidents. President Yoweri Museveni, President Moy, and President uh, Ali Hassan Mwini to jumpstart the East African community. That time it was just cooperation. And I was the first chair uh, of that ministerial tripartite commission. My colleagues were president at uh, that time, Foreign Minister of Tanzania was Regasira. Kikweta had not even been appointed Foreign Minister. And Rogunda, who later became Prime Minister of Uganda, was also the Foreign Minister of Uganda. We worked with speed because we recognized East Africans made a terrible mistake when the East African community collapsed in 1977. Again, unknown to Kenyans and East Africans, she told the police to their face. And even as we speak, those issues have not been sorted. We heard from this administration of William Ruto that um, they were going to compensate the youths who lost their lives. The families are still waiting. No compensation, no talk even, no indication whatsoever that you are willing to talk to these parents. Well, I think it is important. Justice demands that we don't make promises that we can't keep or we don't intend to keep. They just wanted an escape route, which they got. Some of us afforded them an escape route. And then they got all of it. And in fact, some of us who belong to the Azimio family <laughs> are benefiting from the blood and the sweat of the many Kenyans who came to the streets and the whole world stood still and took notice of the Gen C revolt and movement. In the book of Ephesians, uh, where the Bible tells us, life in you, live peaceably with all men. Leaders, we will be there looking for votes and calling each other names. But remember, we have a country. We are all, at the end of the day, Kenyans, East Africans, and members of the world community. Therefore, the example of the Gen C and the millennials. By the way, they are the ones who came out in Botswana hardly two weeks ago. The Gen Cs and the millennials <laughs> came out. So, I think it's within the mediation spirit to ask this administration to give IDs to these young Kenyans because they want to come and teach some people a lesson of their lives. 
like they did they did in Botswana where the ruling party that time